Did you know that the Philippines might be sitting on a treasure worth billions of dollars, not gold, not oil, but rare earth elements? These minerals power almost all the technology we use every day, from smartphones to electric cars. Studies show that the Philippines could be second in the world for the largest rare earth reserves, right after China. It's like we're holding a winning lottery ticket, and we just don't know how to claim it yet. Countries like America, Japan, and Europe are suddenly very interested in us because of this. The question is, are we ready to dig up this treasure without destroying nature and our future? Join us as we uncover the billions of secrets buried deep under our country's soil. This is the story of a wealth that could change the Philippines' destiny. So, what exactly are rare earth elements? What makes them so special? And why are they suddenly in the news so much? These elements, often shrouded in mystery, are actually fundamental to many of the technologies we rely on every single day. To be honest, they're not that rare in terms of abundance on Earth. You can find them in various locations across the globe. The real challenge lies in their extraction. They're super hard to separate from other minerals because they tend to occur together in complex mixtures. This intricate process requires specialized techniques and equipment. There are 17 elements in this group, often referred to as the lanthanide series plus scandium and yttrium. Each one possesses unique properties that make them indispensable in various applications, each one important for technology, from consumer electronics to advanced industrial applications. They are the unsung heroes powering our digital world, from the colorful screens of cell phones where they help create vibrant and energy-efficient displays, to the strong magnets in electric cars, enabling powerful and efficient motors that drive the future of transportation, and even wind turbines where they play a crucial role in generating clean and sustainable energy. They're like the vitamins of modern technology. You only need a little, but they have a huge impact. Without them, many of the devices and systems we take for granted simply wouldn't function. Rare earths are also key to the green revolution. They are essential components in many clean energy technologies. Electric vehicles, which are rapidly replacing gasoline-powered cars, solar panels, which harness the power of the sun to generate electricity, energy-efficient lighting, which reduces energy consumption, and lowers carbon emissions. So, as the world fights climate change and transitions towards a more sustainable future, the demand for these minerals keeps going up, creating both opportunities and challenges for nations around the world. Controlling the supply of rare earths is a big political and economic issue, with countries vying for access to these critical resources. If we lost them, we'd go back to the time of slow computers and big, clunky TVs. Innovation would grind to a halt. Luckily, the Philippines has a lot of them, according to recent geological surveys and explorations. This is an opportunity, but it comes with a huge responsibility to extract and manage these resources sustainably and ethically. How will we face this challenge? How can we harness the potential of rare earths while protecting our environment and ensuring a prosperous future for all Filipinos? The story of rare earth discovery in the Philippines is one filled with serendipity. It wasn't a meticulously planned expedition or a targeted research initiative that led to this groundbreaking revelation. Instead, it was a twist of fate, an unexpected turn of events that unveiled a treasure trove of these valuable minerals hidden within the archipelago. It was, in essence, an accident, a chance encounter that opened up a new chapter of hope for the nation's economic future. This accidental discovery has the potential to reshape the Philippines' role in the global market. Back in the 1970s and 80s, the focus was primarily on the hunt for more conventional resources like copper and gold, mining operations were in full swing, and geologists were diligently surveying the land, hoping to unearth new deposits of these precious metals. It was during this period that some observant geologists stumbled upon peculiar rock formations in the region of Palawan. These rocks were unlike anything they had encountered before, sparking their curiosity and prompting further investigation. These rocks were heavy, unusually black in color, and subsequent analysis revealed that they were abundant in elements like scandium and yttrium. These elements, while not immediately recognized for their significance, would later prove to be key components of rare earth minerals. The true nature of these rocks remained a mystery until they were brought into the laboratory for detailed examination. It was within the controlled environment of the mineral testing laboratory, using advanced analytical techniques, that the geologists finally unlocked the secrets held within these unusual rocks and discovered just how valuable they really were. The revelation that these rocks contained significant concentrations of rare earth elements 
sent ripples of excitement through the scientific community. But the story doesn't end there. Another significant discovery further amplified the Philippines' potential in the rare earth arena. This time, the focus shifted from land to sea, specifically to the vast expanse of the Philippine Rise, also known as Benham Rise. Explorations of the seabed revealed that the mud and sediment found in this underwater plateau are also remarkably rich in rare earth elements, presenting a new frontier for resource exploration. This groundbreaking finding was the result of collaborative research efforts between Japanese and Filipino scientists, highlighting the importance of international cooperation in unlocking the secrets of our planet. These discoveries, both on land and under the sea, have captured the attention of the global community. Suddenly, the world began to take notice of the Philippines' hidden potential. It became clear that the Philippines' natural wealth extended far beyond its terrestrial resources. The nation's underwater territories held a treasure trove of valuable minerals, opening up new avenues for economic growth and development. The data gathered from old field trips, the samples collected during marine explorations, all contributed to placing the Philippines firmly on the global rare earth map, signaling its emergence as a key player in the industry. This transformation marks a significant shift for the Philippines. From a nation primarily known for its agricultural prowess, its hard-working farmers and fishermen, the Philippines now stands on the cusp of becoming a potential superpower in the realm of critical minerals, a development that could reshape its economic landscape. Suddenly, old maps, geological surveys, and mining reports, once relegated to dusty archives, have gained immense value holding the key to unlocking the Philippines' rare earth potential. This unexpected turn of events has ignited a new sense of hope, offering the promise of a more prosperous and sustainable future for the Philippines and its people. But the discovery of these resources also presents a critical question. How will the Philippines harness this newfound wealth? How will it navigate the complexities of resource management, environmental protection, and social responsibility to ensure that this accidental discovery translates into lasting benefits for all Filipinos. In the intricate and often secretive world of rare earth elements, one nation stands head and shoulders above the rest. That nation is China. They've strategically positioned themselves to be a dominant force. They control over 80% of the global supply. This isn't just a market share. It's a stranglehold on resources vital to modern technology. From smartphones to electric vehicles, so much relies on these materials. And when they decide to limit exports, whether for political or economic reasons, the whole world goes into a frenzy, scrambling to secure alternative sources. Industries grind to a halt, and prices skyrocket. That's precisely why other countries, realizing the precariousness of relying on a single source, like the US and Japan, who are technological powerhouses in their own right, are becoming increasingly desperate to find viable alternatives and secure their own supply chains. They're investing heavily in exploration and research. And that's where the Philippines, an archipelago nation with untapped potential, comes into the picture. According to geological surveys and expert analysis, we might just be sitting on millions of tons of untapped rare earth reserves, a potential treasure trove beneath our soil. These deposits are believed to be concentrated especially in regions like northern Luzon, with its rugged terrain and the biodiverse island of Palawan, and even beneath the waves, in the resource-rich underwater plateau known as the Philippine Rise. If these reserves are proven to be commercially viable and extracted and used correctly, with responsible mining practices, we could potentially become the second largest holder of rare earth reserves in the entire world, a truly transformative prospect. What makes our deposits even more significant is that they are particularly rich in heavy rare earth elements, containing valuable elements like dysprosium and terbium, which are crucial for high-tech applications. These heavy rare earths are not only rarer in occurrence, but also significantly more valuable due to their unique properties. This abundance of heavy rare earths gives the Philippines a distinct strategic advantage in the global market. However, we shouldn't simply be content with being a supplier of raw materials, shipping unprocessed minerals overseas. We should also invest in developing the capacity and infrastructure to process these minerals domestically, adding value to our exports. The Philippines has a golden chance to be a true game changer in the rare earth industry, transforming our economy and securing our future. But realizing this potential requires smart strategies, careful planning, and a long-term vision that prioritizes sustainability and national interest. 
Are we truly ready to step up and compete with the giants in this high-stakes arena? The answer will determine our economic destiny. Behind the numbers, there are real lives affected by rare earth mining. Mong Lito, a former farmer in Palawan, got a better income as a field assistant in mining exploration. He was able to send his child to college. But for Aling Nena, an indigenous leader in northern Luzon, the land is sacred. They're afraid of losing their culture and way of life if large-scale mining comes in. Communities are divided. There's hope and opportunity, but also fear and worry. The issue of rare earth mining isn't black and white. There are dreams, there are threats. The voices of local people, especially indigenous groups, are important to hear. True progress should include everyone. The question is, how do we balance hope and fear? The story of rare earth is the story of every Filipino. The decision is all of our responsibility. Rare earth mining has two sides, progress and danger. Billions of dollars in income, thousands of jobs and community development. That's the promise. But in return, there are big risks to nature and health. The process uses chemicals that can pollute rivers and land. Tailings from the mine can contain radioactive elements that cause sickness. There are stories of disasters in other countries, farms that became barren, communities that got sick. Progress has a price. Can we get the benefits without sacrificing our future? Right rules and technology are key. The question is, how can we protect nature while we grow? The answer is in our hands. The biggest challenge in rare earth mining is protecting nature. Many deposits are in areas rich in plants and animals like Sierra Madre and Palawan. Mining needs trees to be cut down, thousands of gallons of water to be used, and it causes pollution. Contaminated water from the mine is a threat to farms and homes. Acid mine drainage and heavy metals can have effects that last for hundreds of years. We need strict rules and constant checking from the government. We should use new technology to lessen the damage. The wealth under the ground is worthless if it means destroying nature. The responsibility is no joke. The future of nature depends on our decisions. Rare earth wealth is like a rainbow. There's gold at the end, but the path is dangerous. We need smart management to make our wealth a blessing, not a curse. The government must make sure the Philippines gets a fair share of the profits, not just foreigners. Set up a special fund for education, health, and the future. We shouldn't just sell raw ore, we should invest in research, development, and our own processing plants. Train Filipino scientists and engineers. Being open and accountable is key, all contracts and profits should be public. A strong agency should watch over the effects of mining. The voices of local communities and indigenous people should always be considered. Smart management will make sure that the wealth goes to every Filipino. The Philippines is at a crossroads. Progress or the destruction of nature and culture. Our decision today will shape the country's future. It's not a question of whether to use the wealth, but how, in a right, fair, and long-lasting way. We own the natural resources. We should be the ones to watch over them and decide. We need transparency, good policies, and protection for nature. Rare earth is a chance to lift up the country, but it comes with challenges. Let's prove that we can be responsible caretakers of our wealth. The future is being made by us now, with every decision. Let's unite in watching, planning, and acting. The wealth under the ground is a test of our intelligence, honesty, and love for our country. Hopefully we answer it correctly.